In today's episode of the Midweek Ramble, I'll be sharing with you seven reasons why you may actually want to incorporate a strand of kid mohair silk into your next knitting project. So if that sounds like just your cozy cup of tea, get comfy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. Thank you so much for being patient as I delayed today's video by one day. I was with my mom. She was a post-op for a knee replacement yesterday, and I wanted to make sure I wasn't distracted by the upload of a video and having all of the things going on surrounding a fresh upload yesterday so that I could be there for my mom. So this video is a day late, but absolutely not a dollar short. And I'm really excited to dive into the content of today's video. This is actually a subject that pops up quite often over at the Wool Needles Hands tip line. That is a place that you can go at the Wool Needles Hands website to drop me tips and ideas for future midweek ramble videos. And this happens to be one I receive quite frequently, and I'm just now getting around to diving into this topic. Now, as I was researching and prepping for this video, I could swear I had made this video before. And maybe that's why I've been putting this video off is because I felt like this content was already on the channel and it's not and it might be actually in piecemeal through various different videos but not in one you know isolated video where we talk about just this topic and that topic is how to pair mohair with a conventional base yarn what to do why to do it what are some things that you can expect to see when you do it and what are some of the benefits of pairing mohair with a conventional base yarn and I want to dive into that today and I'm going to give you seven solid reasons that this might be just what you need to do for your next project. But before I do that, I do want to direct your attention to a much older video that I already have here on the channel that doesn't go into all of these details, but it talks a little bit about how you can achieve some really fun colors by pairing a variegated mohair or a surrey over the top or alongside a conventional base yarn. If that sounds confusing or you're not exactly sure what I'm getting at with that, definitely check out that video. I will link to it down below and it'll pop up up here somewhere as well. I do want to let you know that at the very end of this video, I'm going to give you a couple bonus tips on how to incorporate these yarns and how incorporating a strand of this yarn will impact the overall gauge of your project. So stick around for that. Okay, listen, we live in Las Vegas, I live in Henderson, Nevada. It's a city just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. We've been getting all of these clouds and rain and <laughs> It's much more, it wasn't supposed to rain today, okay? It was actually supposed to be quite clear, but looking outside, I um, call BS on that because this is not what anybody expected. We're starting to get giant thick gray clouds coming in from the south and it's beautiful, but it's just way, like, where did this even come from? I love this weather, but it's kind of nuts. Okay, so yeah, so in and out of this moody, we're gonna have like moody and then bright and then moody and then bright, but we roll with it. Okay, before we get into the meat of this, I wanna talk a little bit about what mohair is, and we're gonna make this really quick and dirty. And not only am I gonna talk about mohair, I'm gonna talk about surrey, because if you've heard of people using mohair, you've probably heard of people using surrey. And these are both, I don't wanna say colloquialisms for something much more than just what they are named, um, but they're just the common word used to um, denote each of these different types of yarn. Mohair. When you hear mohair being used on knitting podcasts and within knitting projects, what they're referring to is actually a yarn comprised of around 70% kid mohair, which comes from the kid of an Angora goat, and 30% silk, which is usually in the form of mulberry silk. This is a combination that is spun together into a lace weight yarn. It is not entirely mohair and it's not entirely silk, but it is usually a combination of the two in rough a 70 30 ratio. You're also going to hear people refer to Surrey. Surrey is a similar ratio, 70 30, and that can kind of go either way. You can have a little bit more of the Surrey and a little bit more of the silk, but it contains baby Surrey alpaca 
paired with mulberry silk, again in a similar ratio. For those that can't knit with mohair because they find it to be too prickly, Surrey is a fantastic way to go as an alternative. However, it is really important to note that Surrey is much less lustrous than its mohair counterpart because Surrey alpaca, the fiber and the fleece, has very little luster, whereas mohair from the Angora goat has quite a bit of luster. The silk is going to help, but in the case of Surrey, it's not going to give it any kind of additional luster. So when you look at the two of them close together, and I move it around in the light, you can see that this mustard color Surrey doesn't reflect the light nearly as much as this really beautiful kid silk haze from Rowan does. It's really absolutely lovely. This is a 70% baby Surrey alpaca, 30% uh, or silk, I should say. And then this one is Rowan kid silk haze. And this is also the 70-30. So this is 70% kid mohair and 30% silk. Both of these yarns are typically categorized as lace weight, but in the case of the Surrey Silky or the Surrey Silk, that would be a mistake. This usually falls into the category of a light fingering weight yarn when you've worked it into your project. It definitely expands the overall gauge of the pairing of yarns by quite a bit, far more than the mohair does. So if you are using Surrey to replace mohair in a project, you need to expect the overall weight of the yarn that you're creating with this to be heavier than it would be if you were using a mohair. It just has an overall heavier weight and the the halo created from the baby Surrey is a little bit more dense and it pushes things around a little bit more than the mohair. The mohair is a little bit more of a pushover. It's not quite as dense. It doesn't fill in the gaps as heavily as the Surrey does. So it's really important to know it's not a one-for-one -one swap in my opinion and in my experience. You are going to notice a pretty significant gauge shift to the side of being heavier if you're swapping out a Surrey um, or if you're swapping out a mohair for a Surrey. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. Now, when you hear me say hold a strand of mohair over the top of or alongside of a base yarn, what I'm saying here is that you're pulling a conventional yarn, like a basic worsted weight yarn or fingering weight yarn comprised of wool or wool and nylon, a conventional yarn with one of these lace floofy yarns, if you will, and you're holding them together. Whether I say over the top or alongside, it doesn't really matter. I'm just referring to holding those two yarns together. The first reason why you might want to consider using mohair or its Surrey counterpart in your next project is because of the softness and the air of luxury that it lends to your work. Mohair is known for its softness and luxurious feel and that delicate halo that it gives to the fabric of the project that you're working on gives it just enough lux to make it be dressy while also being super cozy and comfy. And of course mohair can be casual and that has a lot to do with the silhouette of the overall garment or I item that you're working on, but mohair and Surrey are definitely lovely yarns to add to a conventional yarn to add just that bit of supple softness. Now, one of my favorite sweaters that I've knit and I've knit four so far is the Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers. I have one on right now, and this is fabulous. It's beautiful, and it is knit with a worsted weight yarn and a strand of mohair silk held double, and I love it. It's very warm and toasty, and that's okay right now, but it is beautiful and luxe. In fact, it didn't always, um, it wasn't always this color. It used to be kind of like a rosy pink color and I over dyed it to be this really beautiful warm navy color. And I have a whole video documenting this process over on the Wool Needles Hands Patreon if you would like to check it out and help support the channel that way. You can definitely do that and I so appreciate it. But this is a fantastic option of how you can take something that would have a really lovely rustic appeal to it and add just that extra touch of luxe and softness. So it does have a really nice mohair halo, as you can see. This one here is also a Felix pullover. And this one was also knit with a similar uh, composition. So I have a organic merino worsted base yarn, and I held it double with a strand of kid mohair silk. Both of these garments were knit using Fiber for the People yarn, which is my hand dyed yarn business, but it is essentially a merino worsted yarn with a strand of kid mohair silk. And this is a fabric that you can achieve with any merino worsted yarn and any kid mohair silk, but these are the ones that I've chosen. But it adds this air of elegance 
and luxury and softness that you wouldn't have if it were just a straight merino strand of yarn. And that's not to say that it wouldn't be beautiful like that. It just adds that little something extra to give it that bit of refinement and luxury. I'm going to hold this up a little bit so you can see. So from a distance, it just looks like a really nice soft sweater. But when you get up close, you can see that it has a really lovely halo. Much more subtle. The halo in this Felix is much more subtle than the halo in the one that I'm wearing. Let me step just a little bit closer here and you can kind of see. It's really so beautiful. So adding that strand of mohair can be just the ticket for adding that little extra bit of refinement and softness and coziness that you're after in your hand knits. Now, the next most obvious reason that folks are adding mohair or surrey to their work is to add warmth. Mohair is incredibly insulating and surrey alpaca is also a fantastic insulator and adding these yarns into your project can take a yarn from warm to extra warm and toasty for those of you living in areas where you really need those extra warm layers. But the real benefit of this as it relates to the warmth is that mohair and even surrey fiber is very light weight. So adding a strand of this to a conventional yarn that you're using for a project isn't going to increase its weight all that much, but it's going to add a lot of extra warmth. So you get all the extra warmth without a lot of extra bulk. One thing I've wanted to explore in terms of kind of temperature control of a hand knit garment is using a base yarn that contains about 50% cotton with a mohair pairing, because that way you have a 50% wool, 50% cotton base yarn with something that is quite warm, but that cotton element in there would be just enough to strike maybe a really lovely balance for a temperate climate while maintaining that lovely luxurious halo that we all love so much. So I think that in terms of warmth, because mohair can really boost the warmth factor, if you want to incorporate that lovely halo in a garment that you're going to be able to wear more throughout the year, try choosing a base yarn that's composed of a good percentage of cellulose fiber like linen or cotton to help balance out that overall warmth factor. One of the main reasons folks flock to mohair or surrey is because of that really beautiful halo it provides to the overall fabric. And that halo comes from the little hairy fibers that make up the mohair or the surrey yarn. So again, mohair has lots of little spindly hairy bits in here and they're actually quite soft. You might look at that and think that that looks very prickly, but it's very, very soft. Not everybody thinks that and not everybody can wear mohair, but for an awful lot of people, this is considered quite soft and luxurious. And if you look at Surrey, you get a very similar effect. However, the fiber tends to be a little bit more crimpy, so it's not so long and spindly. It's more coily and it gives it that lovely teddy bear look but all of that contributes to really beautiful halo in the overall project. And folks are after that. It's just such a lovely texture. I'm gonna show you here my Magnolia Bloom. And this is, this is a pattern by Camilla Vaud. And I love this sweater so much. It is so soft and cozy but just to get in there really quick on this halo. I knit this using a Merino single ply DK weight yarn with a strand of Surrey alpaca and silk in this really uh, beautiful color called Endor by uh, Fiber for the People, and it's gorgeous. How pretty is that? Do you see that lovely halo in there? It just, it has a little bit of a casual vibe because it's not super shiny, but it also is just very luxe and soft. Oh, it's like butter. I love this sweater so much. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is when you hold Surrey with a yarn. And then here, is an example of that same halo. And then of course what I'm wearing when you hold mohair with a yarn. It's subtle, it's not hairy. I think some people tend to imagine um, a really hairy sweater, like one of those monstrosities that they would sell at Wet Seal in the 90s. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. That's not what you're getting here. That is very, that look was a look, but it came from something very synthetic and not lovely. And, and I think this is so much more subtle than that. So when we say mohair, we hear hair and we think of a hairy sweater and that's just not what you're getting. You're getting something with a lovely halo, a lovely luxurious texture. So I love a good halo. I love a good Surrey 
teddy bear scrumptious halo. It's just honestly, it's it's lovely and it's definitely something to try if you've never tried it before to feel how it feels working up in your hands and then to feel it against your skin. Of course, it's not for everybody. So you're going to want to test with a swatch to make sure that you're into it. But if you're into it in a swatch, you're going to be super into it in a sweater. Another fantastic reason to incorporate a strand of mohair or surrey into your next project is for the really beautiful color variation and visual interest it lends to your project. And this is really a major topic and concept in that video I mentioned previously, which I am going to link down below. But just to give you a little example of what I mean here, I wanna show you some sweaters that I've knit in the past that incorporate a differing color of mohair than the color of the base yarn that I chose. You're going to see a contrast there. And when you bring those two contrasting colors together, it can be really quite magical. Starting on the more subtle side, the first one I want to share with you here is the Tulip Jumper by Melody Hoffman. I'm going to hold it up so you can see it just to get an overall look. You can see here the overall color of the sweater. It has kind of a marled look to it. And when you look at it, at first glance, you wouldn't know necessarily that I was holding two yarns together here to achieve this overall color, but I was. I had kind of a rosy mauve base yarn, which is Tinda by Hillesvog. It's a really lovely sport weight Norwegian wool yarn. And then the mohair that I held over the top of that is this really lovely espresso roast colored mohair. And I'm gonna pop a picture up here so you can see the two yarns separate and then you can see the fabric here that it produces. It has such lovely visual interest it kind of neutralizes the pink, making it wearable with all sorts of different things. You don't have to worry so much of trying to match something with pink because you have that really lovely brown color in there to sort of neutralize everything and give it a nice marled look. And so that is what you can get when you add one color of mohair with something completely different for a base yarn. Another example of this is here in another Felix pullover that I've knit. You can see here that the fabric has a really lovely newsprint vibe to it. It has kind of an overall gray color, but there's lots of little pops of color popping out there, giving it a really lovely marl. And I'll hold that up here so you can see. Isn't that beautiful? This is achieved from knitting with a strand of platelope in a really lovely oatmeal colorway, and then a heavily variegated strand of mohair in what's called Kick Drum by Fiber for the People, which has lots of pops of color and lots of navy. I will show you a picture of both of those yarns separately here so you can see what they look like on their own. And then this is what they look like when you pair them together. And it's really magical. And then my last example is my No Frills Pullover by Petite Knit. Similar situation happening here. I am using a really lovely navy teal base yarn that is completely solid with a strand of kid mohair silk in the colorway Angel Rust by Fiber for the People. And this is what we get. This really gorgeous overall solid color, if you will, kind of from a galloping horse. But yet when you get up close and look at it, there's this really lovely variation in color. And that's created from pairing a multicolored or variegated mohair over the top of what is a solid base yarn. Watch that video I link because I talk a lot about that in that video. Another reason to consider using a mohair or a Surrey lace weight yarn in your project is the fact that it's going to lend a really beautiful drape and fluidity to the overall fabric. Remember, the mohair yarn, this kind of yarn, Kid Silk Haze, contains about 30% silk. Same for the Surrey. And not only that, mohair already has a really lovely drape and so does the alpaca. We all know that alpaca is a fantastic fiber to use if you wanna have something that's very drapey and fluid. Same thing with mohair. It's not quite as drapey as alpaca, but it's much more drapey than a merino, for example. You pair these two with silk and you're looking at something that is just dreamy and drapey and fluid, and I love it. So if you're going to pair a strand of that with a conventional wool yarn, you're going to add a lot of that drape and fluidity to your project. And it's also going to add a little bit of weight, which may be something that you need for that fabric, depending on the base yarn that you're using. For, for example, if I go back to my Felix pullover that I knit using uh, Plotilope, which is a pencil roving yarn, it's unspun, incredibly lightweight. It's, um, 
I don't even know, when you hold it in your hand, it's so lightweight that you know you probably have to hold it with something double. You don't want to knit with it all by itself because it's just too airy and it's hard to explain. It's just kind of like cotton candy, if you will. When I held it with the mohair here, because it's only one strand, this is one strand of platelope. I take that back. I might have held two strands. No, this is just one strand of platelope held with the mohair here. It added that drape that I knew I wasn't going to achieve if I just knit with the platelope alone. There's some extra weight here, some extra drapiness, and a little extra fluidity that I absolutely needed in this garment. So adding a strand of mohair or a strand of surrey is going to give you some lovely movement and some lovely drape that you wouldn't have if you didn't have that extra strand in your project. Now, like I said earlier, when we were talking about warmth, one of the major benefits of a mohair or a surrey is that it's incredibly lightweight. It's a lace weight yarn and it adds a lot of warmth for how light it is. But because it's so lightweight, you can manipulate how warm a project is going to be by incorporating it with yarns that are maybe less insulating. But you can also choose to knit with it on its own, held double or even held single, for items that you want to be really open and airy. And that open and airy nature will allow you to get some airflow so it's not super toasty, but you're going to have something with a really luxe and lovely halo. But the projects that only incorporate mohair are so beautiful and ethereal and draped and very luxurious. I absolutely love them. And you can only achieve that in some of those projects because of how lightweight a mohair and then also a surrey is. That lightness is really something lovely and something to consider trying in a future project. The last thing I want to mention here, and this is going to ease me into the bonus uh, tips that I'm providing at the end of the video, is the fact that adding a strand of mohair or a strand of surrey can up the weight of your overall yarn by just enough to get you to where you need to be for a particular project. Perhaps you only have sport weight yarn in your stash and the project you really want to knit incorporates a DK weight or a light worsted weight yarn. You can add a strand of mohair to the sport weight that you have, have fun playing with color, and it pushes the weight of the overall yarn being used to where you need it to be to knit that project. It's kind of like, I, I honestly don't know, this is not a very good example, but it's really the best example I have. I feel like this example is like negative, but it kind of explains what I'm talking about here. It's like if you're having soup for dinner and you have three extra guests that show up unannounced and you weren't expecting them, but you want to be able to provide them with soup for dinner. Perhaps you add a little bit more wine, a little bit more cream, a little bit more stock to the soup to spread it out and have it go the distance you need it to go to accommodate those three extra guests. This is really similar to that. You're adding something ever so slightly to the base yarn that you were planning on using anyway to bump up the weight category so it can be used for the project you're eyeballing. It's really kind of a magical thing. Mohair is just one of those mediums within knitting and fiber arts that's very versatile. It's very polarizing because there are folks out there that love it and that hate it but it really comes in clutch in a lot of different ways. And I highly, highly recommend you give it a try and see if it's for you. Okay, two tips that I want you to take away from this video to kind of help you plan your next project, incorporating mohair. The first is gonna answer the question, well, what happens to the weight of my yarn if I add a strand of mohair? For example, what's gonna happen to the overall weight of the yarn if I start with fingering and I add a strand of Kid Silk Haze to the mix? What does it become? Is it a DK weight? Is it a worsted weight? What's happening there? This is what you want to remember. It's a good rule of thumb. It's hard and fast and your mileage may vary, but it's a great place to start. And it's what a lot of designers are using as their rule when it comes to developing their patterns where they incorporate mohair. Adding a strand of mohair to your base yarn adds one weight category to the overall yarn. If you're starting with a fingering weight yarn and you add a strand of mohair to that, you're increasing that weight category to a sport or DK weight yarn. That is not the same rule if you're adding Surrey. If you're adding Surrey, you're increasing that weight category by one and a half weight categories. So for example, if you have a fingering weight yarn and you are adding a strand of Surrey silk to that fingering weight yarn, you're now venturing into DK light worsted 
territory. So it is going to increase it by a little bit more than it would if you were adding mohair alone. So go forth knowing that if you are going to add some Surrey or some mohair to your base yarn, you're increasing that overall yarn weight by one or one and a half weight categories, depending on whether you're using mohair or Surrey. Okay, the other question that gets asked a lot, you have a project that requires 860 yards of DK weight yarn, and your plan is to use a fingering weight yarn and a mohair yarn to come together to create that DK weight yarn. Again, you need 860 yards of this. Okay, well, does that mean that I need a total of 860 yards, meaning I need 430 yards of my mohair and 430 yards of my merino base yarn? No. And this is why knitting with mohair gets really expensive. You need 860 yards of the mohair and 860 yards of the base yarn because you are pairing those two together and they both need to go the same distance. So when you start knitting with Surrey and mohair, you are essentially purchasing two balls of yarn for every one ball of yarn you would use if you were knitting with the suggested weight category in the pattern. If that makes sense. So I'm not going to lie to you and say, everybody should do this. It fits everybody's budget. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It's far more expensive. And I probably should have inserted this in the beginning of the video, but whatever, we're all grown ups here. It's more expensive. You're going to need more yarn. So when people are knitting with Surrey, just know they went out of pocket far more than the person who knit or, or mohair than the person who knit using the suggested weight category of yarn. And um, it's not for everybody. So that's something really important to bear in mind. I will say though, however, that a ball of mohair or a, a skein of mohair has far more yardage in it um, than you know, your average skein of worsted weight or fingering weight yarn. So a skein or a ball of mohair is going to go further. You're not going to need to buy four skeins of mohair yarn for every four skeins of merino or fingering weight yarn or whatever. You're probably going to need fewer of these because they have more yardage. So there is that. But you are going to need to purchase the yardage in both of those yarns because you're pairing them together. And again, they need to go the same distance. If you look on Ravelry, you will notice, and I, I'm going to pull this up so that I can show you here as well, that one of the features of this, and some designers do this and some designers don't. I know that Petite Knit, because she incorporates mohair in almost every single one of her patterns, does use this on Ravelry to show how much yarn you're going to need. Let me get to where I need to go. If I look at, okay, if I look at the no frills page on Ravelry and you go down to yarn weight, it says yarn held together, number one. So she's letting you know that for this sample, she held two yarns together. She held a fingering plus a lace weight, which gave her an overall weight of DK. And she even gives you the wraps per inch of what she created when she paired those two yarns together. If you really wanna get into it, you can get into wraps per inch and that might be something I dive into in another video. But you can see here that she's holding two yarns together to a get a DK weight overall yarn. And if you go down below that to yardage, that yardage she's giving you there is what you're going to need to create of that DK weight yarn. So of the DK weight yarn essentially that she created by holding those two strands together, that's the yardage that she needed or that you were, will need depending on your size, 1,148 to 1,837 yards of that DK weight yarn. And in order to successfully create that DK weight yarn, you're going to need the fingering weight yarn and the lace weight held double, which means you're going to need that yardage of both of those yarns, which means you are going to double the total amount of yardage you're going to need of yarn in general, because when you hold them together, they are then going to create that yardage range that you see there, if that makes any sense. So it's really important to remember that if you're incorporating a mohair or a surrey into your project. Well, there you have it, folks, a quick and dirty look. I don't know if it was quick, I don't think it was dirty, but <laughs> look at seven reasons why you might want to incorporate mohair or surrey into your next project. I want to leave you with this reminder. Just because something's popular doesn't mean you need to do it in your project. If mohair is not for you, then own that. And that is completely okay. I knit with a lot of mohair because I just tend to like it. I feel like it neatens up a woolly fabric. 
but I don't always want to knit with it. And I completely 100% understand folks who don't like it. And that's fine. Own what you love, own what you don't love and just go with it. But if it is something you want to try, use these seven kind of, I don't know, encouraging factors to help motivate you to give it a try. But do remember, it is pricey and your budget is your budget and it, it might vary from other people's budget, but it is going to make a project significantly more expensive. So that, you know, is something to consider. But this was a lot of fun. I like diving down these little rabbit holes with you guys, but also I like having a video that I can direct folks to now to kind of answer some of these questions. And I really hope that it did just that for you. If you enjoyed yourself or took any value from today's video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, which I upload on an every Wednesday and every Sunday schedule. Until I see you again for Sunday's episode of the Knitting Podcast, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.